Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy and today we're doing an X399 motherboard review. We're checking out this big boy right here. This is the Gigabyte Aorus X399 Gaming 7. And let's jump right into it then with the key features. So of course, this supports all your Threadripper CPUs from the 1950X down to the 1900X. It takes up to 128 gigabytes of quad channel DDR4 memory at up to 3600 megahertz. Now one thing I will say straight away, if you have not watched my X399 as a mess video, uh, this particular motherboard is very, very fussy when it comes to memory. So definitely check out the QVL list to make sure your memory is gonna be compatible with this motherboard. Now, as far as the PCI lanes go, you get 64, so that's a huge amount of expandability there. I mean, you can go crazy with, you know, multiple graphics cards or whatever you want to do. It has RGB lighting all over, including on the RAM and the PCI slot, so that's really cool. It's coming with the Realtek ALC1220 audio codec, the same as what you see on many good uh, X370 motherboards. Bizarrely, though, it was really quiet for me. Uh, when I was using this, I had to just crank up my speakers. I've never had that happen before. Maybe it was an audio driver problem or something like that. But for some reason, it was very, very quiet uh, compared to other motherboards I've tested in the past. Now let's talk about the layout then. And we'll work from top to bottom. So up the top left there, we have the 8-pin and 4-pin CPU power connector. Some of the X399s are going up to 8 and 8, but you know, this should be just fine. Um, I, I don't really see it being a problem, really. It has an 8 phase CPU power delivery with really big heat sinks, so that's going to be really nice there. Then on the uh, more top right there, you have two more fan connectors and an RGB lighting connector. Then, sort of around the corner from them, you have the CPU fan, CPU optional, and a pump connector. Then of course in the middle there you have the TR4 socket. This is a Foxconn one and I did have a lot of trouble screwing in my 1950X to this socket. Uh, the LOTS one seems a lot better. Um, again, refer back to that X399 video, you can search my channel for it and that way I, I sort of show the comparison between the two of them and how different they are. Then we just have the motherboard connector and a USB 3.1 Gen 2 header. Over above the PCI slots, we have another system fan connector. Then we have five PCIe times 16 physical slots. So two of them are running at times 16, two are running at times eight, and one, are, one is running at times four. Then we have the three M.2 PCIe four, uh, times four slots. They have really beefy heat sinks on them and they seem to do a really good uh, job, but I would definitely use the lower ones. Uh, you obviously don't want your M.2 right under the graphics card. Then we just have eight SATA 6 connectors if you really need to use that many. I mean, more is always better, so that's always nice to see. Then down the bottom, we have your front panel connector beside the debug reader, USB 3.0 header, two more fan headers, and then two USB 2.0 headers. Power, restart, and clear CMOS buttons, and then we just have all the lighting headers plus all the front panel audio stuff. Now let's flip round and talk about the rare I.O. then and what it comes with and we'll work from left to right, how about that? So on the top there we have the PS2 port above two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, they're the yellow ones, use those for USB DAX. Uh, then you have USB 3.1 Gen 1 port, a white one there, use that when you want to update the BIOS using QFlash or if you need to do a BIOS flashback or something like that, use it for then. The other five U, uh, blue USBs, they're just, once again, USB 3.1 Gen 1, just standard ports. Then you have an RJ45 Ethernet port beside the antenna connectors for the 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. Then you get a USB 3.1 Gen, uh, Gen 2 Type A and C port. Those are the red ones you see there. And then, of course, you have your gold-plated audio connectors. Let's move on now to the BIOS and see what that's like. So BIOS wise, uh, it's pretty easy to update with QFlash. It's very straightforward. Uh, I would definitely recommend <laughs> updating it. This one I got came with the F1 BIOS and that was an absolute mess. Uh, so definitely update the BIOS. 
the bias itself is very straightforward to use. I don't think you would run into many issues with it. Uh, I, I found my way around it just fine. And of course, this is the enthusiast platform. So I think you enthusiasts will be able to find your way around it just fine. I managed four gigahertz on my 1950X at 1.4 volts. Although you probably would be able to get your voltage lower than what I did. Um, just depending on you know, how much time you spend on fine tuning the overclocks there. Which brings us nicely into the conclusion, and what do I make of this Gigabyte Aorus X399 Gaming 7 motherboard? So overall, it's, it's got a lot of potential, I'll put it that way. It's, it's got a lot of potential there and a lot of good features, but it's being held back by really poor memory compatibility and this horrendous Foxconn socket. The layout is pretty good though, and it has, yeah, as I said, very, very nice features. I think this will be a solid board once they get all those things uh, figured out. Most of them will be through BIOS updates, which will be definitely good. Uh, you definitely have to do them if you get this keyboard. The BIOS overall and overclocking is still going to be very solid with it. And I do think this will turn out to be a good motherboard. Just right now, it's not there yet. It desperately needs better BIOS updates. And you have to be very careful with which memory you run with this or you may be restricted just to dual channel mode. With that being said though, uh, definitely keep an eye on this one and if you're thinking about going to X399, then I would probably just honestly give it like another month from now, uh, then think about switching over to the platform. Most of the bugs will be figured out by then I would imagine there'll be more BIOS updates for boards like this and then they'll be a lot better. So that's basically what I would say. But overall, this does have a lot of potential. I'll definitely say that much. Now I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Which brings us to the conclusion and what do I make of this ASUS, fuck it, ASUS. <laughs>